What's up on my Power Ice Crew? Today's video, we're back into some paracord. So we got some different varieties of zipper pulls going here. Or you can even use them as little key fobs if you want to decorate your keychain up a little bit. Tell them your call how you want to use them. We got the two color snake knot, square knot. Actually, that's the wrong side of the knot. There it is. See? Pretty cool. Cool stuff. So. And on this one, we have the Cobra Weave. Very popular weave on a lot of different things. This a Cobra Weave, as I mentioned before, is what you see in a lot of your uh, stores to make the little bracelets out of. You guys want to show you how to make the bracelets? If you do, down in the comments, tell me. Hey, show me how to make those uh, cool bracelets and stuff. Because I'm doing Jeep stuff on zipper pulls, grab handles, and different things. But if you just want to see some um, cool bracelets as well, tell me down in the comments, all right? So, if you guys want to see how to do this stuff, alright, let's get on with that video. So if it's the first time you guys hit Power Axe YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I do cool videos, Jeep, cars, motorcycles, tools, paracord. So be sure to hit that subscribe be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll get out in a minute. Alright, let's get on with this video. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna show you guys a couple quick easy ones. Very simplistic. Simply take, fold it in half, and what you want to do is you watch the loop, twist, and push in at the same time until you get something like this. So actually, these need to be lined up a little bit better to get something like this. They're just crossing over top of each other. Basically, this is nothing more than a simple overhand knot. Then we'll take this, these two tails, beat them in through here. Bring your knot up a little closer, wherever you want it. Now, the only reason I show you this this one, it's a, like I said, it's a very simplistic one in case you need something just quick and easy. That you don't want to have to do a whole lot of braiding. But if you notice right here, how this crosses over each other, you want that where they're just simply stacking side by side. Where these are twisting like that, so all you want to do is take your loop, pull it back. Twist this backwards like this, which will bring this back. Get them two to stack over top of each other and pull your knot tight like that. And once you get them evenly wrapped to where it's all nice, neat, and stacked and organized, pull good and tight. And now, how much tail you leave out here is totally up to you. Now, again, this is just one of those things if you just need something quick. That'll do it, and plus it's still kind of a decorative knot. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. And now we're going to show you another one of the little simple knots. Well, it's not as simple as the overhand one I showed you before, but still yet, yeah, not that hard. So here I have a 16-inch piece of paracord, and you will, you may or may not want to cut part of it off when we're done with this knot, because it doesn't take up a whole lot of length. Let me zoom back on you a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, here's your loop hanging down here. Bring this down here, like that. This one, like this. To get them hanging over top of each other like so. Bring it up a little more. Shorten our loop up here. See what I got? It's kind of like a... M or W, depending on which way you want to place it. So now, this side here, I'm going to lay it over top of all the strands this way. See what I got going on here? Now we're going to take this one, this side, bring it over this way. This one goes across all the front ones, this one goes across all the back ones. So we're formed two different loops here. Take this one. Feed it inside that loop. Take the one that's coming around the back. Feed it inside that loop until we got this right here going on. Now pull this little snug, pull this little snug. Don't pull them completely together yet. You don't want that quite yet. So to recap, you make your letter M because it'll come here. It'll come up and down. This side will come up and down. We'll take this side here first, lay it across this way. 
this side over here will come across the back side. Then we'll tuck our ends through this loop. This end will go through the top of the loop here. Then we get this. So now we're going to take this one that came through the back side here, come up through that way. Take this one, feed in right alongside of this one right here. Feed it through like that. So we got it going on. Now we take this one, feed it in with this one, like so. Now little by little, work your knot tight. What you want to do is, whenever you're pulling your knot tight, don't pull out like this. Take your tails, go this way with it as you're pulling. Now what you want to do is, you see we're, we're starting to form a cross right here. Let you zoom in a little bit more on you. See we're starting to form a cross right here. Now on the back side we're forming a cross there too. So what you want to do is pull this up a little bit until you're right alongside of this one. This one will pull it up a little bit until you're alongside this one. Pull your tails in your loop. So we're forming an X right here. And we're forming an X right there. Then if you want to, you can just be picky about it and just pull your crosses in a little tighter with each other. Line them up flat with each other, line them up flat with each other. Pull tight, pull. And that's what we get. So we got a little X right here. Flip 180 degrees. We got X right there. Then we got all this tail left over here. Wow. Come back on you a little bit. I've got probably about four inches of tail here. So if you want to trim it off shorter, you can do that. Totally up to you. Well, since you've already got your knot good and tight, if you want to slice it right here and flare the ends out, you can do that as well. And what you can do with this, since we made it off of the zipper, simply feed it in like this. Bring this around. Bring this down on top of the knot. And we can do it like that. See? Again, you can leave a tail sticking out there. You can trim it back shorter. Or we can take and cut here. Don't cut my hand. Cut those. Now, you can cut your tails off short like that and just burn them and don't flatten them. It puts a nice little gloss bead on the end of them. In the event, you know, this knot ever starts wanting to work loose on you, all you got to do is grab the loop right here and grab on top and pull. You'll tighten that knot right back up. And you'll have these nice little bead ends right here. And you'll have a ton of tail hanging there. But again, it's one of those type of braids or tails or whatever that you can make it like you want it. Cool? Cool. Next. Now the next one we're going to do is the Solomon's Weave or the Cobra Knot or Cobra Weave. Now you got one or two ways you can do this. One, you can make your loop here long enough that you can just loop it over into itself and feed it through like that into your zipper. You know, like, you know, you take, feed your tail, your loop. Come on, dang it. You know, it's hard to pay attention to the camera and do this at the same time. Then you stick it through there, then you take your weave, and then you'd feed it in through here, like that, and you'd have it stuck in like that. See? But your other option would be is to weave it on the zipper itself. So you take your little paracord here, run it through your zipper like this. Now I'm using 16 inches of cord here. 
Now, depending on how you tie it, depending on where you start your weave at, you know, you may end up having clips of your ends off down here, but that's okay. So, what we're going to do is, got this started, let's bring it back over like this. Oh, come on. Get your cord centered, both your ends even. Bring it up. Leave this tail here straight out. Take this one like this, loop it over. Then we'll loop it over like this. See? Let me zoom in on you a little bit. See, I've got this right here. It just simply comes around like this, loops over. Then we're going to take this one, loop it over like this. Over the straight one, bring it back in behind, feed it up through this loop here, like so. Then we're gonna gently pull it tight and just work with it, try to keep your tails even. And see, I do not. So, what we're going to do is Feed this one down a little bit, pull this through like this a little bit. Pull these. There you go. Now we're gonna start a weave where we come across like this right here. So that's now look again, look at the positioning here. This is the one, now I've got the strand here, it's running horizontal to everything else. So we're gonna take this tail here, loop it over like this. Okay, then we'll take this one, bring it over like this one, over top of this, bring it under, beat it through like that, and pull it snug. And see, so you might wanna work a little bit here. Now that we've got our first crossover done, it's going to kind of hold its tightness up here. So at this point, you can pull these, which will tighten this up right here. Okay, so now we're going to take this one, loop it back over here, bring this one over top of this. I'm going to pause here for a moment. This one comes across these two strands. Stick them out horizontal like this. We take this one, bring it over top the end of this one. Bring it under all of it. Tuck it up through here, up through that loop here. See? And pull it tight. Now this is the one we use to cross over these. Take this, bring it over like this. Bring it over like that. Again, I'll pause for a moment. We'll take this one. Tuck it under. And pull it tight. And we should be able to get another one out of it. Bring this over. Like that. Bring it over that one. Tuck it under. And see if we can squeeze it up through there. Oh, dang on, get in there. We're not getting another one after this one if we get this. And this is where, now I was using 16 inches of cord. If you want to use longer cord, go out to 20, you'll get a few more wraps into it. But it's just one of those things to where you really got to figure out how much wrap you want to come up through here. See? There we go. Now I've got this sticking out here, this sticking out here, and I've got everything good pulled tight. So what I'm gonna do from here, I'm gonna go ahead and get my scissors. Snip that off right there. Take a lighter. And position your cord so you don't burn your other, your cord next to it. Get it liquid hot. Take the flat of your scissors. 
and roll it over. Now make sure you got this and pull good and tight. Because whenever you got this few leaves right here, you really need to tug and pull until you get everything. Make sure it stays good and tight whenever you're burning off your ends. Okay, make sure this good and tight. We're going to slice that one off. Leave it about a quarter inch sticking out there. Like that. Get a good liquid. Here we go. Take the flat part of your scissors and just roll it over. And that'll make a good flat edge right there so it doesn't pull in. And that is your cobra weave or a zipper pull. See, that one's not going to be able to permanent because I ain't getting it back off because I lift it back through. But if you made your tail long enough, let's see. Like this one I was playing with here, if I had a little bit uh, more tail sticking out here, I could bring it over, feed it into itself like this. Now, I might have to be able to do this. Let's try it. So I've got another one of my little tool bags here. And this is another knot I was playing with. So, you know, possible we could have taken this through here and stretching this over top of that. Get on there, damn. See, of course, I haven't burnt, the, I haven't cut and burnt the ends on this one right here. I was just toying around with it. But see, now we can feed it on like that, and that'll work like this. So if you make your loop long enough, you can build your zipper pulls with them off the zipper, and then feed them on like that. Cool. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, for our next knot, we're gonna do the cross knot. And what the cross knot is, look right here. Here's one of the red ones I've already done. So it forms a little cross knot right here, right here, right here. And here's a purple one. There, right there, right there. Now, let's show you how to do it. I've got 20 inches of paracord here. And the reason I'm using 20 inches is that it's got a kind of a weave that goes back and forth on itself. And if you've got too little paracord, it can be kind of hard to deal with. So. Divide it till your ends are even. Come down about an inch or so. Now, we have our two different tails here. The tail on my right here, you bring it over that tail, over that, bring it around that tail. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what's up. Now bear in mind, if you're actually putting this on some zippers, you know, you'll want to feed it through your zipper first, then do all this weave stuff. So, see it comes off there, goes over it, goes under it. Then we're going to take this leg here, this tail, bring it this way. Instead of just make a loop like this and keep it under the other tail. See what we got going on here? Pause here for a moment so you guys can see the direction everything's running. Get to tuck this up. Get this back in line. See what we got going. Now, this tail hanging back at me. This tail right here is pointing straight at me right now. I'm going to take it like this. It's going to go under that loop. Through that one. Up through this one down. And just pull your knot together. So what we end up forming here is, you've got a loop here, 
but this right here is coming down at me this right here so that's going to be our vertical leg this is going to be our horizontal leg okay for terminology of how we weave this so what we're going to do now is take this one over this one wrap it around here like that then we're going to take this one and do the same thing as we did on the very first run we just simply make those loops like this this paracord right here is not very flexible so then we're going to take this right here bring it under bring it through here Pull it through, bring it down through there. And this is where you need to work with your knot to pull it tight. So what you basically want to do is, because this right here is coming down through this loop, you have to pull that, push, push that up, which is then you pull this one to tighten that one up and pull this one to keep it tight. And then this one, this way, it's pulled up. So you pull this one this way. Then you got to pull this one this way. Then you pull this one to tighten that one up. See? So now we've gotten two cross knots formed. Now we're going to do one more and again we lay it down we've got our vertical and our horizontal legs or tails whatever you call them. Take this one it goes over over that one like such it goes under the vertical leg like that Pause here so you guys can get a little quick image of what's going on. Catch up with me if you're following along. Goes over, wraps around it, comes out, and just loops right back under it. So this right here is under the, this tail. Then we're going to take this tail here, wrap it around that one, feed it up through there. And bring it down through that loop. Then we'll work or not, pull it up tight. Now, the more you pull these right here, the more you keep working with them, the tighter you can get your cross knots to come up against each other. Like this one here, I'm probably going to work it just a little bit more. Pull that. Then we got to pull that one. And pull that one. Keeping that one tight. Then we got to pull this one a little bit, which pulls from over here. Then we pull that one tight, which closed up those two square knots a little bit. Or square knots, I mean uh, cross knots. So now we've got our three cross knots, got them tight. So what we're going to do now, make sure they're really getting tight because now we're going to take care of these babies. Take this one right here, cut just about maybe a quarter inch. Snip that baby off. Lighter, make it liquid. And roll it over. And that prevents that one from pulling through. Now this one right here, we gotta do the same thing. Give it a little tug, make sure it's snug. Ha, that rhymed. Then we take and snip that off, about a quarter inch or so. Make it 
liquid. Take a flat of your scissors and just make a little flatten radius on it. And there you go. Back side of it kind of looks like a bug. Now you can see on the back side of it right here, you just got this little hop hop thing right here. It's not as pretty on the back side as it is on the front side. Alright, and that was, that's a cross knot. Let's move on to the next one. Now for our next knot, which is going to be the snake knot, we're using another 16 inch piece here. Now if you want to use a longer piece, you can. They're actually a little bit easier to handle when you do use longer ones, especially if you've got more of a complicated braid. This particular knot we're going to do now, it's got a few crisscrosses that you got to do. So if you want to be using a longer piece, it'd be easier to handle once you get a few knots in. But fold it baby in half, make the tails even. Up here, where your loop is here, come down about an inch, right, right along in here. Maybe a little bit of an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, so it's totally up to you. Take this piece here, so we can separate them. They're still just folded in half. Take this one right here, bring it over like this. Hold it right here. Let this loop open up. Bring this across the back here. Kind of, if you hold it the right way, it kind of resembles a pretzel a little bit. So, we want to hold here now. So, remember, we'll bring this right here, which were parallel with each other. You brought it over this first strand here, brought it behind this one, and now we're in the position where we're holding it on this side, on this cross, on this intersection. So, now we got our loose end here, bringing this loose end behind this, bringing it in behind. Then that loop that this leg right here formed, we got to stick it through there. And there we go, just a little bit of it. So remember, just to recap, this leg right here came down. It came down parallel with each other. We crossed it over this one, brought it back in behind the loop, which is this leg right here. Right there, it brought it out this way. Then this leg that was still hanging down here, we brought it behind this one, looped it over into that right there. Okay? So now let's tighten this up. And don't pull outward like this because you don't want to spread your knot out. Hold your two tails here, hold the loop, pull like this, kind of push in, push up, like that, kind of massage the knot a little bit until you get that. Now what are we going to do? We're going to take this one again, bring it over across that one, and do the same thing over again. Bring it over, bring it across, under all those. We'll take this loose tail hanging down here, bring it behind the tail sticking out horizontally. Bring it over and feed it into that loop right there. Slowly pull them up, slap to come up to butt up against this one. Pull this one a little tight. Now grab your knot and pull upward, pushing this bottom knot against your upper knot. Push it up against it. Pull each one of your legs. See where we're getting here? Now let's do another one. And this same pattern just keeps repeating over each, each other. Crosses over that. We're forming our loop here. Bring it under like this. See what we got going on here? It goes over this single leg, goes under the loop, and hangs out like this right here. This is your horizontal leg here, and this is going to be your vertical leg. Your vertical here will take it back under this one. I'm watching the camera still, what I'm doing. Bring it under this leg here. 
pause here for a moment so you guys can kind of get an idea what's going on. Then we'll take this one. Don't let this hair slip back through. Feed it down through that loop right there. And pull them in. And take your knot, push it up against the knots up here. Pull this leg. No, pull them both at the same time first. Then once you get bait up there, take pull each leg individually to form this right here. And you see we've got the same pattern coming all the way down through here. Let's do us another one. Take this leg, cross it over, throw it under. And again, this is where if you want to make a whole bunch of braids, it's you know, the longer piece of core, if you want to squat 20 inches or so, it would actually benefit you. Or however length you want to run. You see, now I've got, this comes over that one, comes under the loop, under the loop right here. It just hanging out there. This is your horizontal leg. It's your vertical leg. Take your vertical leg. Take it back. So now we're going to get tricky on our finger placement here. That's so you can see what the camera's doing. Take the vertical leg. Bring it back under the horizontal. Over the horizontal. And bring it through the loop on this side. Then we take pull our legs in tight, pull the knot up against these, pull here, pull your individual legs. Once you get it in place, get it good and tight, pull the top one. Let me zoom in on you for a little bit. Look, wrong way. And see, there's a pattern that you're forming. See, I like that right there. It's got a really neat crisscross pattern. It's really cool. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, for our next knot, we're doing the snake knot. I know, we already did that once right here. But now, we're, as you can see, we're gonna do a two color version. It's pretty snazzy right there, ain't it? It's pretty cool. So how do you do that? Let's get on with the video and I'll show you. So what we're gonna do is we've got two lengths of cord here about 16 inches long. And when it's all said and done, the cord at the end will be a little bit different length, so you may have to trim them off where you want them. Right, if you notice right here, you got a little bit of the string hanging out the end, which is okay to have a little bit. But if you got like a whole bunch sticking out, if you take your fingers, and you take and grab hold of the jacket right here and pull it through your fingers. It'll pull the jacket over top of the inner core and it'll pull it up in there to where you can work with it. Now what we're gonna do at this point, we're gonna take and heat this up. Where did it go? And get them to the point they're just turning liquid Okay. Now we take, put them together. And wet your fingers. And just roll that. Then we form a good melted knot that's good and tough together. Now if you can make this little knot right here smaller, it's going to make it easier to hide here in a moment because you can see this right here. It's got about the same size knot this does in it, but can you really see it? Not really, but if you get right there, it's right underneath that red wrap right there. You can see a little bit of black line right there. That's where this knot is right here. So what do we do? We need to start our braid now. We need to figure out if we're gonna want the red as a loop or the black as a loop. You can see on this right here, I did the red as a loop. So we're gonna continue with that little theme. So make our red loop pop out like this. We're gonna take the black, 
bring it over like this, bring it behind the red loop here, leave it hanging out like this, take our red tail here, take it behind the black, take it over in front of all of it, tuck it right down through that loop right there. And then we just kind of pull our knot snug. And what you want to do as you're working this right here, tying the knot, and pulling it together, you want to look at your join here where you melt it together and try to tuck it up underneath that wrap. And pull and tug a little bit. See, I've got it it's right there, so if I can pull my knot upward just a little bit high, just a little bit more, that'll work. So now let's continue our snake knot. We're going to take the black again, bring it over like this, bring it behind like this, wrapping it around that red. Then we'll take the red here, bring it behind the black, bring it over everything and tuck it right down that loop right there. Pause here for a moment because we'll when we're done, we take the black, wrapped it around the red, went around this way and bring it, bring it out this way. The red was hanging down. So we took the red, went behind the black here, right over top of everything and dropped it down through that loop that we formed with the black. Now we're going to tighten up our knot. Work it up here. And pull it good snug. And there we go, we got that one. Do it again. Take it black. Go over like this, bring it all the way around like this, form your loop around the red and bring your loop up like you, hit, like you see here. Here's your red going through that loop we just formed. Take the red, go behind here. As you can see here, let me give you guys a little peek here. This black is behind right here, and the, this red is behind all of it. Then we're going to take this red, bring it down through the loop here. Pause here for a moment so you can see what's going on. Then we're going to pull that red on through. Work our knot upward. again. Sweet. Alright. Give it a little tug. Make sure it's just tight. Let's do it again. Black's over. Black's around. Forming your loop. Red goes behind like this. Red goes over all of it and down through the loop. And tighten up your knot. There you go. See how many I get on this one? I got one, two, three, four, six of them. So I got four. I just do a couple more to make it match this one. So we take it over like this, around like this. Black. Well, the black's here. The red goes behind the black and goes down through the loop. And you just keep repeating that same process over and over. this, bring it around like this, red goes behind all of it, tuck it down through that loop. Pull it good and snug, pull this one, 
put your fingers below the knot. I and mean, if you do like this right here, you got to separate your knot. You can separate each one of your wraps and it won't look as clean. Whenever you pull it tight, put your fingers below here. Pull, that way you're actually tightening each one of the knots and not separating them. The last one, you really want it to be decently snug because we got six going here. So now we're gonna trim these ends off because you see I've got this red is longer than the black. Now you got two choices this matter at this point. I made this right here like a little blunt tail, kind of like a little rattlesnake tail in a way, to be honest with you. So you can do that and I'll show you how to do that. Or you can just leave your tail sticking out like this and trim them off to whatever length you want them. And you know, send your ends to uh, this first one's I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, you see our tails are different lengths. Bring it out. We're gonna bring it up right here. It looks like a good point to me. Take your scissors. Cut them off. Get these out of the way. And that did not see do like I wanted it to, but it'll be alright. We'll work with it. And at this point, I just melt them together, make them form a little bubble on the inner there. And just leave it alone because that way it kind of forms a nice little neat cap on the end of it and doesn't allow it to fray out now let's do this one now you can take you know do you wet your finger roll it and stuff like that it makes a little point that's totally up to your call I'm resisting the urge to roll that end. Let's see, you can see. Come on, camera. Made little bubbles on the end of it. All right, now that's what you do, want to do if you want to just leave the tail sticking out like this right here. Totally up to you if you want to do it that way. Now, if you want them to flush out up here, like I've got this one. Make sure you're not so good snug. Take your red one, or whichever one you want to start first. And look, I'm leaving probably about a quarter inch hanging out. Cut that off. Melt it, get it good and liquid. Last of your scissors and just roll it. Then we're going to do the black one. Get in here, by right along here. Leave them look a quarter inch, maybe a little bit, just a tiny bit less, maybe if you want. Snip that off. Make it liquid. Scissors, roll it. And then you can see on the end right there, it just kind of forms like a couple of bug eyes, honestly. And that's what you get. Pretty sweet. And I like the two colors, they're pretty cool. And you can see right there a little bit where I tucked that a burn end where I should join it together. You see just inside there a little bit, that's where I joined it. Now as a zipper pull, that's gonna do just fine. Now if you gotta really put any kind of real pulling pressure on it, it probably wouldn't be recommended as a different way of doing this, but for zipper pulls and little key fob ties like this right here, key fob things, this will work out just fine. Cool, sweet. Did you guys enjoy that video? Did you learn a little something from it? If you did, be sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Leave me some cool comments down below in those comments. Tell me what kind of more paracord stuff you guys want to check out. 
I've done some grab handles, but I want to do some more grab handles uh, in different weaves and different uh, buckle ends and things like that. Uh, so I've got a lot of cool stuff i got planned for you. So you might want to subscribe if you haven't. Okay? Okay. So, also, be sure to share these videos out because you know, whenever you share them out, other people will get the knowledge and it just kind of spreads the knowledge and it helps a lot of people out. You know? Cool, cool. All right. Uh,